Welcome back to another episode of the Fit and Fabulous podcast. I'm so excited to have you join us today. We have a fantastic show lined up filled with tips for living your healthiest and happiest life. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's get started. What is good, you guys? Welcome to the first ever episode of... I just totally forgot my own podcast name. I think it's Fit and Fabulous. (laughs) I don't even remember. This is so bad, you guys. I'm really, really sorry. Also, again, first episode. I'm literally looking it up right now. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot. Yeah, here it is. Oh, my God. I have to burp, dude. So, like, if I burp during this, I apologize. I'll probably cut it out, but... You know, like turn the sound off on my phone so it doesn't freaking interrupt us. But anyway, yes, hello. Welcome to the first ever episode of Fit and Fabulous Podcast. I am so excited. People have been telling me that I need to start a podcast for literally years. Um, Ever since I was on freaking like playing video games, people are like, you need to start a fucking podcast, bro. And I'm like, "Mm, I don't know. So... 2024, here we are, and I am starting that podcast, and yeah, that's like, that's a good eight years that people have been telling me that I need to make podcasts, because it's been since 2016, so YOLO, (laughs) I don't know, anyway, um, today, um, I'm just going to introduce myself a little bit, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, and you've been following me for a little bit, uh, I have had my channel for about a year, So if you already know me, you can just kind of like skip past. Um, I might have show notes. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. So we're going to be figuring out this editing thing together. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, my name is Mariah. I am the host of your Fit and Fabulous podcast. Talk about all things health, fitness, and lifestyle related. Uh, occasionally we'll probably have some like freaking conspiracy theories or something just because who doesn't love a good conspiracy theory? Uh, I don't keep up on the news. Honestly, the news that I get is like from the screens that are (laughs) the screens that show at work. That's literally where I get my news from. I, yeah, I'm really bad about keeping up with news. (laughs) For instance, like I made a, a TikTok on my book talk account. Yes, I have a book talk because I, I am a book girly. We'll get more into that later. But anyway, I made a TikTok and like I normally make my coffee at home in the morning. Bro, the one time I freaking go to Starbucks, okay? The one time I go to Starbucks and make a TikTok and post it, it, it gets like multiple views because it's, a cover release. Like it's like a new cover release that I was like, oh my gosh, we're revealing this. So, you know, I had like a couple thousand views or something by this point. And people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe people are still drinking Starbucks. And I was like, what the fuck happened? Like, why would we not be drinking Starbucks? The freaking like the palace, is it the Palestinian war and the Israel war? I don't know. Like, again, I don't keep up on news. Please don't fucking cancel me for that on my very first podcast. Like, that would fucking suck, dude. Um, But I was like, I'm not supporting them. Like, I just wanted my fucking coffee. Like, what? Just let me drink my coffee in peace, please. That's that's all I'm asking at this point. Like, I'm, I'm a coffee junkie. I can go without coffee, but like... Coffee is my happy juice, okay? I need it for my mental health. Like, I don't drink any other caffeine. My one cup of coffee a day, that's all I ask for, okay? That's all I fucking want is just my one cup of coffee. Leave me the fuck alone. Like, (laughs) Big B is just not as good. They actually have two locations down here. I'm from up north in Indiana. And Indiana, Michigan has, like, a shit ton of Big Bs, okay? And there's two here. I literally can't fucking escape it. Because when I lived in Texas, like... There was one Big B there, and it was right down the road. This one of the Big Bs here, literally right down the road. The other one, right around the corner from my gym. I literally can't fucking escape Big B. I worked there for like five years, and I can't fucking escape it now. Like, leave me the fuck alone. You're not that great. <laughs> You're just not. And it's probably because I know how shit is supposed to taste there, and when people don't make it right, like, I can fucking tell. So I just don't go to Big B. Um, Starbucks is great, but I make my own. I have my own espresso machine, like... Although I just bought like this Italian roast and I thought it was going to be like darker 
than what I got. I would get the Starbucks beans. Please, please don't fucking cancel me. Please. Um, <laughs> but, like, I would get the Starbucks beans. This was long before. But I'm like, bro, this shit is, like, not as strong. I need, like, strong-ass coffee. I can't do fucking blonde roast. It's just too watery for me. And I like that shit strong. Like, I do two pumps of syrup with some almond milk and four shots of espresso with extra ice. I just don't understand. I don't understand how, like, espresso... Like, there are different... I guess it does make sense because, like, if you think about the science behind it, like, it's how long it's roasted. But, like, the lighter the roast, the more caffeine it has because the less time it's had to, like, cook off. It's almost like cooking alcohol. Like, you cook the alcohol off. So, like, the longer the beans roast, like, the less caffeine they have because it's had more time to, like, burn off. And I don't know. I just like the dark... The dark roast. Like, it, I just love the coffee taste. I literally would drink black coffee. Like, black iced coffee. It could be negative 20 degrees outside, and I would drink coffee. Or iced coffee. Not hot coffee. Like, the fuck? Um, anyway, I kind of, like, veered off on that topic there. And now I don't even remember where I was going. Oh, I was just telling you guys about me. So, yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously I'm a coffee addict. Uh, big gym rat. I've been working out for about two years now. I've lost 50 uh, pounds since I started my weight loss journey a little over two years ago. I literally started my first prep today for powerlifting. I am eight weeks out from my first meet. Um, my current totals are... Uh, so my squat is at 298 pounds, 135 kg. And my bench is at 60 kg, which is like 133 basically, um, but I can't do 135. And I switched from a close grip to a wide grip. So I basically like started all the way back over um, and I had to plant my feet. So yeah, literally starting all the way over on my bench. And then my deadlift is at 314, 315 uh, kgs. It's 142.5 kgs. So we're pretty freaking strong. That was beltless, by the way. But squats felt fucking great today. Like, I was doing like 77%, which actually I did 78 because it's easier for me to do 105 than it is for me to do 104, like putting the weights on. So I freaking did that. I freaking did 78% instead of 77. My coach is like very specific with those. But I'm like, fuck it. It's just a single percentage. Like, it's not that big of a deal. So I put it on that weight felt fucking amazing today. He finally took the pauses out. I was so excited. I freaking hate pause reps. Um, he took my tempo bench out too, but like, I'm still pausing at the bottom by like two seconds just because, um, when you in the comp, like they make you hold it. So we did that. My bench is getting there. Um, I'm really hoping to hit like a red plate for my meat with with the thingies on the side. So like, I'd be happy like getting anything over one, like a blue on there. Honestly, I would be happy, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a struggle, but we're working on it. Bench is getting better. Um, today I had to do for both my bench and my squat. So I did squat first followed by bench. And, uh, so that way he does it that way. So that way kind of like mimics me. And honestly, like my strength and like endurance has gotten so much better since I started with him six weeks ago, because I was doing 80% on my squat. And when I went to 80% on my bench, like I literally had to take it down. Like it was 75 to 80. And so I did 75% on my bench the very first week. And I literally had to drop it down to 70% because I was so fucking fatigued. Like my endurance was like not great. It was not great at all. So like I've come a long way in that aspect. Yeah, he had me doing a fucking five by six. And he said next week that it's going to be a four by seven. I'm like, oh my God. Also, he, he has me like tracking my weight, even though I'm not losing weight for my first meet, like I'm going to stay in the 90 kg class one because the 82.5 is fucking ridiculous. And I'm just like right there. I'm like right on the edge of the, of the like two weight classes. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to like bump my calories slowly over the next eight weeks because my, I like tracked my macros and it was like 1700 today. Not a great day. Honestly, today was not, not a good intake for me. Um, also I have not done meal prep yet. Uh, yeah, I haven't done meal prep yet. Fuck my life. I just realized that I may just do like enough to get me through tomorrow. Um, and then like maybe a lunch, 
because Wednesday, I don't have to go to the gym. Wednesday is rest day. But yeah, anyway, sidetracked. When <laughs> you guys will find that I get sidetracked very easily. Thankfully, podcasts are like long versions. Like I feel bad, like releasing a really long like YouTube video. I'm like, people are not going to sit there and like fucking watch that. Like obviously I have video for my podcast, like on my YouTube channel, but everywhere else it's just audio. And I don't know, like I don't do audiobooks. Like I prefer to listen to podcasts. And then if I'm in the mood, like I'll listen to music. Like today I was in the mood to listen to music instead of my podcast. And I was fucking jamming to Sabrina Carpenter. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to listen to her while I'm like working out. And I'm like, oh, these songs are not it. So I switched over to Bad Omen <laughs> because I'm like, I have to have like that rah, 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 in the gym, you know? You know what I'm talking about? So. We switched back over to Bad Omen. Um, but anyway, my endurance has like come up like a ridiculous amount. Um, so I'm really hoping to hit like reds, but like I'd be happy with 155 because that's basically a red, but without those like collar things on the side, because there are some collars that are like 2.5 kgs. So they're five pounds each and uh, depending, because sometimes USAPL will use those. And since it's hap the meet is happening at my gym, like I don't know if they're going to use those or not on the platforms. So they could, they might not, I don't know. It would make sense to use those. So I'm really hoping I can hit that with a red, which would be like 165, but I don't know. My coach also is like, why are you not using leg drive? And I'm like, I thought I was. So apparently I don't know how to use leg drive. He's like, I'm gonna have to show you one time when we're both at the gym at the same time. So, because I don't know how to fucking use leg drive at all. He's like, you got to have hella upper body strength in order to be able to bench press 135 because like, he goes, I don't know how you're not using lay drive and you can get that much. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm a strong queen, I guess. Like, just imagine, imagine how much my bench is going to go up as soon as I fucking start using lay drive. Like that shit going to fucking skyrocket. I'll be, I will be happy because I might be able to get to 225 once I start using lay drive. Like, fuck yes, let's go. I'm so excited. We also have Josh over here. He's, he's sleeping. He's dreaming a little bit. But um, he's my baby. I've had him since the day he was born. He is 13 and a half years old. He's like old. He's an old man, but he acts like a fucking puppy. He's, he's my baby. He is my everything. Like, I fucking love him, okay? Um, he's, he's the sweetest little boy ever. I swear to God. Um, anything else that you guys really need to know about me? I don't know. Like, um, bookworm, huge dark romance reader, freaking love dark romance. I don't know what it is, but like there are some romance novels. <coughs> <coughs> oh my God. Like Anna Huang, she's not a dark romance author, but oh my God, she writes some spicy shit. Like... My favorite book that I've read so far is Twisted Hate, and it's because it's an enemy to lover. So, like, yes, it's a slow burn, but they have, like, the banter in the beginning of it. So, like, it keeps you entertained enough till you get to, like, the spicy shit halfway through the book. And then Twisted Lies, like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. That one was oh – that I love that book. Like, it was a good book. But, like, why did I have to wait 365 pages for Spice? Like, that was torture, like, getting to the spice. Once I got to the spice, like, that book was done in, like, five hours. Um, anything by um, T.L. Smith? I think it, it's either TJ or T.L. I think it's T.L. Smith. Fuck, dude. She's the one who got me back into reading after high school, like, literally in July. I've bought, like, 60 books since July because she got me back into reading. Thanks a lot, like hold on how much is 60 times like because like an average book is like 20 dollars. obviously i've gotten shit on sale but just on average so that way you guys can like kind of see how much i spend on i've spent on books since july oh my god no bro i've spent like 1200 dollars since july on books are you shitting me Oh my God. Oh my God. Ah, okay. I got to stop buying books, bro. I've got plenty of books. Although, um, divine rivals, shit. Um, 
Divine Rivals next book, Ruthless Vows. That's coming out of my bank account soon. I don't know why they just don't take it out like at that time because like they take it out when you pre-order it. Um, that's coming in like in a week. So that shit's like coming out of my account probably within the next couple of days because it actually releases tomorrow. It might have already come out of my account now that I think about it. I gotta see. I guess I get to thinking about this shit, and then I'm like, I gotta fucking figure this out. Ouch! It did. It came out. Oh, that one only cost me fifteen dollars. Hee hee. Nice, dude. That means I have more money in my account than I thought. Fuck yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, um, that book. Hopefully, shit. I need. I'll have to check that later. Um, I should be getting that book within the next couple of days, which means that once I finish King of Wrath, instead of going into King of Pride, I have to fucking read Divine Rivals. I'm a little scared to read Divine Rivals. Like, Fourth Wing was good, and people are like, oh, if you're a romance person trying to get into fantasy, like, you need to read Fourth Wing. Fourth Wing, like, I'm wearing my Fourth Wing sweatshirt right now. Like, obviously, I'm obsessed with Fourth Wing. Um, Freaking love Zayden, love Violet, love their whole little thing they got going on. All of that, but um, I'm a little scared for Divine Rivals because it's for fantasy people trying to get into romance. And so I'm like, fuck, dude. So I'm going to finish King of Wrath and then I'm going to start Divine Rivals so that way I can hopefully read Ruthless Vows because I want to read Lu Ruthless Vows like while the hype is there. And then um, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope I don't spend any more money on books until April 30th when King of Sloth comes out, which is the fourth book in the, because it's the, the Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, or the, the seven kings, whatever it is. I think it's the seven deadly sins. So there's like one of each. And so there's King of Wrath. King of Pride is the second book. King of Greed is the third book. And then King of Sloth is going to be the fourth book. Um, but she's like got all these. Anna Huang said she's got like her stuff ready for release. Like all of her release dates through 2027 or some shit like that. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Like, but I, I have to wait for these ones to come out because I read the whole Twisted series in less than a month. Like it was a lot of, it was like 3000 pages worth of shit. I read that month. That was in July. So it was a fucking lot. <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyway, big bookworm. I could talk about books for forever. And we may even talk about books on this podcast just because it's a, such like a big part of my personality. Um, and that's something that helps my mental health. So, and obviously mental health is important. So uh, that's like the main gist about me. I'm a power lifter who's also a bookworm um, in North Carolina right now. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> But it's all over my it's all over my fucking Instagram, so people are gonna know anyway. Like, what the fuck? Um, but yeah, so I'm originally from Indiana, where it's fucking cold as shit. I lived in Texas, as I mentioned earlier, for about a year and a half. Fucking love Texas. I am working on getting back there, and that is that is my goal is to be back there when my lease ends here because. I don't I don't want that. So like I don't like it here. I fucking hate it here in North Carolina. The only good thing is the gym. I fucking love my gym. Like the gym owner is great. Joey's fucking great. Um, you know, I get to work out with my friends while I'm there. The community there is great. <laughs> oh my God. It kind of reminds me of like Alpha Land in a way, but a little less influencery. So like there are influencers there, um, but it's not as influencery as, um, as Alpha Land. And obviously they don't have like three fucking gyms. Um, but they do have two locations. They're doing their grand opening for um, the North location, July 13th. I will be there. I will be at that one. I don't have to work because I work, well, I worked this past Saturday and then I work next Saturday and then I work the Saturday after that and then my manager will be back. So she's going to be, I, I put her on the schedule for that weekend. And, uh, and then I found out that they're doing that. And I was like, yes, I don't work. Even if I would have worked it out, like I would have rearranged some stuff. Was I, would I have been working? But, um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I get to go to the grand opening of that. They're working on finishing up the, um, the posing room. I went in there today. It's pretty cool. Um, I like walked in there and I was like, am I even allowed to be back here? 
but the door was open. So I'm assuming it was okay, but I just took like a couple pictures and then I fucking left. But the lighting there is like so good. Um, cause it's natural lighting, but that's going to suck because you got to like figure it out, but they're putting in, um, the infrared sauna, they're putting all that shit together and they are going to have cold plunge at this new location. So I'm really freaking excited, really, really freaking excited for all of that. I freaking love the gym. The lighting there is like immaculate. It is so good. They're working on getting some more mirrors in and everything. So like, they're going to be like putting shit together within like the next two weeks to really pull everything together for the grand opening. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a little bit about me now that I've spoken for like 20 minutes on myself. <laughs> um, but that will hopefully give you like a good picture of who I am. Uh, for today though, like for our opening of the podcast, I do have some things that I want to, or one specific topic really that I want to talk on and, um, tips for being like, since th this is the new year, cause I'm going to be releasing this January 4th. Um, since it's the new year, beginning of the new year, a lot of you are probably like getting back in the gym and you're like, yeah, I'm going to, this is my year. Like 2024 is my year, right? I, th the main thing I want to talk about in this podcast episode is going to be the, um, oh, tips for a successful and sustainable fitness journey. Because if you think about it, health and wellness, like staying healthy, staying fit, all of that. It's a lifestyle. And I'm not saying that like you shouldn't have a life. You shouldn't go out with friends and all that other stuff. That is not what I'm talking about. Like for me here, my friends are all like gym related. So like I, I see that like my social hour is the gym, but there are people who are you know, they like going out with their friends and stuff and that's okay. Like it's okay, but you have to do things in moderation as well. But I have realized like since like I ha I've been sober for almost a year, not that I was like an alcoholic or anything, but like, I just didn't like the way that I felt when I drank. And so I won't, I don't do like anything anymore. Like the last time I drank was in Nashville with my friend at the beginning of March of, uh, 2023. So this year, for her birthday, we went there and we got like these coupons for like jello shots. And that's when I knew, that's when I knew shots just fucked me up. Like they don't sit well with me. I literally had two shots. I had drinking or drinking. I had drank a gallon of water throughout the day at dinner. When we went and had dinner, I drank water. I probably had like two glasses and you know, they're fairly big glasses. I had two of those at dinner. So I was over a gallon of water. I had eaten food. Like we ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner that day. And all I had was I had two shots. So I had one shot and then I had a sex on the beach because that was like, that's like the only alcoholic drink that I like usually. And I always have to ask for extra orange juice because I just cannot stand the taste of alcohol. And so obviously like the sugary content and alcohol don't mix, but normally like I'm still up at five o'clock the next day. I can drink 10 sex on the beaches and be up at five o'clock the next morning and be perfectly fine. Like I'm weird like that. Okay. Like I'm perfectly fine. I'm up moving about. No, these shots, like I had two jello shots. So I had one shot, one sex on the beach, and then we got another shot. First of all, that shit tasted nasty. I don't know what they used in there, but it was so gross. I was like, do we even want the second shot? And she's like, fucking YOLO. Like, let's do it, bro. That's no, mm -mm. half hour later, I'm throwing up in the bathroom at a different bar. Like I could not like, and I was not feeling too hot before that I had gotten water. The bouncer at that bar, cause we ended up going to Miranda Lambert's the bouncer at that bar would not let me take my water outside. And I was like, bro, I just want to fucking hydrate. Like it's water. And he's like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't let you take any drinks outside. And I was like, fuck this. I was like, you can just take it. Cause I need to get out of here. Like I needed air. <laughs> so I went out there and like this really sweet girl, like walked up to me and she was like, are you okay? Like, do you need me to like call somebody for you? And I was like, no, my friends inside, like, I really just need air. Like I'm not feeling good at all. Um, and she was like, are you sure you don't want me to like go get her or anything? And I was like, no, it's her birthday. Like, let her be like, I don't want to interrupt her birthday. And she was like, okay. Like, I'm just right over there if you need me. And, uh, I ended up throwing up again outside. Like it was so bad. It was so bad. And so I texted my friend and I was like, Hey, I'm headed back to the hotel because like, I just threw up everywhere and I, I don't want to deal with this. So, and we were supposed to meet up with like a bachelor party that night. 
I was like, uh, I'm not going to make it. And the, the guy who, uh, I was texting back and forth with, um, that we were going to meet up with him and his friends. He like called me to make sure I got back to the hotel room. Okay. Which was really sweet. Um, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, no, but I made it back to the hotel room. So I'm a crash. Like, sorry, we didn't hang out. Um, and I was in bed till literally like 20 minutes before we left. I put on like the, like, I think I had like sweats or something. Like I had brought a couple different outfits and I like threw my sweats on because I was sleeping in my outfit that I was in the night before. I threw on sweats, threw all my shit in my bag, grabbed it. And uh, she met me downstairs because she went and had the valet pull it up while I cleared the room of my stuff. And then we left. So yeah, I was in bed till like 1130 that next morning and I passed out before nine o'clock. Like I was back in the hotel room and passed out at nine o'clock. So that tells you how fucked up I got off of shots. So because of that experience, I'm like, I don't think it's even worth drinking anymore. One, the calories are not worth it to me with the way, um, with the way that my body feels, but some people like the experience and that's okay. Like some people like going out and drinking with their friends, like being in that environment. That's fine. Like I will still go out and I'll still hang out with my friends and I'll tell them I'll be designated driver. Like that's fine. Like that's just me. But if you enjoy going out from time to time with your friends and drinking, there is nothing wrong with that because that is a life, like that's a, that's an experience. You know, you want to go out, you want to celebrate your friend's birthday, go do it, go have your drink. You do you boo boo. But like, I will, I'll just be a designated driver. I will, I will always be the designated driver. Um, and usually like that was me. Like I usually want, I w always wanted to be the designated driver in that, um, before, before I said that anyway, um, and there was one other time, like, uh, me, me and the same friend and one of her friends met up with us and he was like, I want to take shots, but I don't want to do it alone. And I was like, well, if you pay, like I'll do shots with you because Melanie will drive me home. So, oh my God, I was so sick the next day. So, and I, I didn't think it was like anything of it. Like I was just like, oh, like I'm hungover or some shit. No, like my body just does not react to shots. I just cannot do shots. I can't do straight anything like, ugh. cause oh my God, like it makes me want to barf just like thinking about it. Um, but like going out and experiencing stuff, like that's fine. Like I will go like for Thanksgiving and stuff. There are certain things that like I normally wouldn't eat, but they're there and like pumpkin pie. I oh, don't get me started on pumpkin pie. Don't get me started on pumpkin in general. I am a whore for for pumpkin. Like I fucking love pumpkin. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I love pumpkin, but, uh, the like pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving day just like hits different. I don't eat pumpkin pie any other day of the year, just Thanksgiving, except I didn't this year. Um, although I will take that back because like, I personally have like a a Greek yogurt, like pumpkin recipe, like pumpkin pie recipe that I'll do. And I'll just buy like those little graham cracker ones, but like legit pumpkin pie, I will only eat on Thanksgiving and oh, it is so good. But the, the reason behind it is because I know the way it makes me feel. And so like, I have like severe gut issues. Um, like between my, like I'm allergic to MSG because it fucking fucks up my stomach. Um, I'm allergic to seafood. I'm also allergic to mint. So like three really big things I'm allergic to. You may be wondering how I brush my teeth. Um, I did find some one is a, I have like a blue raspberry flavored one. It's not kids toothpaste either. Um, but a blue raspberry flavored one. And then I also found an orange creamsicle or dreamsicle like flavor one. So that's how I brush my teeth. Um, but besides that, like I just know the way it makes my stomach feel. And so like eating out for me is not something I do very often because I know that like the consequences that come with it are not worth it. So like, unless I'm going out and doing something with my friends or like family or something like that, like it's not worth it to me. Like I will just go to McDonald's on like a random ass day just because I don't have, like I haven't eaten. So I'm like, oh, I need to get calories. No, fuck, I'm not going to do that because it's going to fuck me up for like a week. So, it, you know, you just got to play it by ear and you can make healthy food taste really good. Like I have, 
I have a recipe book. So if anybody wants like a copy of the recipe book, just like let me know. Um, but it's like mac and cheese. Do I even, I don't have it here. I have it on my computer, but like there's like baked mac and cheese and um, like chicken parm and like all these like really delicious meals that are like high in protein. So they're gonna be satiating to you. They're made with healthier ingredients. So they're gonna be healthier for you. You're gonna be able to digest it easier. But like all of that in general, even if you don't like want my recipe book, that's fine. Like just to do healthier ingredients, switch from the, the biggest thing is going to be switching over from like processed foods and just cooking at home more often, drinking a gallon of water, like just those like two simple things, switching to whole foods and aiming for a gallon of water a day, you're automatically going to drink less of everything else and to try and hit that target intake. And you're going to drop weight like that. Like those are two really easy things. And it's also going to help with your gut health. Now there are like, you can have intolerances. Cause like there's somebody that I know who, um, like avocados, they're obviously healthy for you, right? They're like a healthy fat. And this person cannot have them. They get so bloated and like all this stuff because their body cannot digest it. So like, obviously there are differences from person to person. So you know, everything's going to be different for everyone, but it's very hard for me because not only am I allergic to a bunch of shit, I'm allergic to so much fucking shit, right? With all three of those. And oh my God, like I have heightened taste buds on top of it. So I can't even, uh, it's so bad. It's so bad. So I'm like a picky eater on top of it. So like I do fucking like burger bowls. <laughs> It's literally rice with either ground turkey, like grass fed, um, lean ground beef or ground turkey, like lean ground turkey. And then, um, like some shredded cheese, like low fat shredded cheese with some, um, like no fruit, tor no fructose corn syrup ketchup. Yeah. That's like a burger bowl for me. That's like dinner, but it's really good. So I'm not complaining, but like I've seen people who do them and they put like mustard, pickles, onions, and I'm like, Bleh! I can't do any of that shit. That's so gross. Like pickles are okay from time to time. I literally have a jar of pickles in my refrigerator and I think I've eaten one pickle because I just, I used to eat pickles all the time, but now I have to be in the mood for pickles. It's really fucking, it's really fucking weird. Cause I would devour a whole like big ass jar of dill pickles in one, in like an hour. I could devour that shit. And now I'm like, no, I have to be in the mood for it. It's so bad. But yeah, anyway, so beyond just like the, the food aspect of it, just switch over to whole natural foods, like get foods, meal prep. Meal prep is a really big thing. And I'm going to cover meal prep in like a totally separate podcast. Um, like I'm going to do like meal prepping one-on-one for a podcast. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll do that next week because that tends to be something that people kind of are like hesitant to do. I want to say they're like, Oh, I'll start meal prepping later. Um, and like, I'll just focus on going to the gym. Like meal prepping is such a big part of it. Like, I don't know, cause some people who may be coming back like into their fitness journey or whatever, they're like, oh, um, abs are made in the kitchen. That's not necessarily true, but your nutritional value of everything does have a huge, huge part to play. And, um, the big thing you really want to focus on in the beginning of your fitness journey is just getting really strong. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to gain weight. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to lose hundred pounds. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to lose 15 pounds. Like getting strong is the most important thing in the gym because building muscle is going to help you lose fat. So we really want to make sure that we bump your metabolism. And by doing that, you want to increase your calorie intake. I know that sounds weird when, you're like, oh my gosh, but I want to lose weight. Why would I eat more calories? So like, I'm not going to necessarily, like, I'm not saying necessarily take anything away out of your diet. I'm just saying add to it and you're automatically going to cut all this nasty shit out that like your body doesn't like. And you're automatically going to start eating healthier foods. Who doesn't want that? Like, you're like just adding things in, your body's going to automatically do that. You're, it is the, the one thing is, is it's going to be harder for you to 
um, to want to eat because you're going to be eating a higher protein diet, more than likely, more than likely, you should be eating a higher protein diet, um, which again, I'll cover a majority of this in next week's episode for you, but the the importance of like just slow doing slow little changes is so important to help with the the long term success of your fitness journey. So, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I had an energy drink earlier and I'm still like burping from it. It's so, oh my god, it's so bad. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, anyway, so just like switching out little things, adding in things, you're automatically going to cut the things out that your body doesn't cr- want because you're doing more of the, the 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 better foods, the foods that you're able to digest. I don't want to say like healthy foods and like all that, but the whole foods, like your body's going to want that more. Oh my God, your body's going to want those whole natural foods more than it, it's going to want those other ones because you're going to feel how your body like transitions. And so like, you're going to be digesting food and then you go back to processed food. Like you're, you're going to feel so fucking bloated. I promise you, like, you're going to feel the effects of it. And you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, like, I don't want this because of the way it makes me feel. Um, so just little tiny changes. You're going to be like, I'm going to go to the gym every day, every day. First of all, don't fucking do that. (laughs) Do not go to the gym every day. That is so bad for you. Um, your body needs to rest and recover. Rest and recover is like a big thing, but we're going to work on getting strong. So we're going to work on lifting heavy ass fucking weights. Okay. Like we want to do that. You want to be able to bench your eventually, like you want to get to the point where you can bench your body weight, squat one and a half times your body weight and pick up two times your body weight. So like, am I at the point where I can pick up I'm like right at the point where I can pick up two, two times my body weight. And I've been working out for two years. So that's just to give you a little bit of context, but we want to lift heavy ass weights. So you're going to want to start in like, you know, the lower rep ranges. Um, maybe so like anywhere from like four to six reps on your compound movements, on your compound movements, compound movements are like you're using your full body for. So like your bench, your deadlift and your squat. Those are like your compound movements. Those ones you want to start off like with like anywhere from four to six reps and then you can build up. Um, but your form on your deadlift tends to break down a little bit once you hit like four reps. So like you could even go lower than that. Um, but four to six reps is pretty good for starting out. You know, you're working on getting strong and you really want to focus on form because if you don't focus on form, like you're going to hurt yourself. Um, so, you you know, you really want to do your research with your form and everything, hire a coach trainer. Um, that that's one thing, you know, one, you know, they're going to help you with that. So you don't injure yourself, but two, they're going to be able to help hold you accountable. Even if you're only meeting with them once a week, you know, they're going to be able to to help you. They're going to keep you accountable. Um, which is why, you know, it's, it can be important. Like, you know, I, I do coaching on the side. I help people, um, you know, stay on track. Like that's one of the main things as a coach is helping people stay on track and making sure that they're not going to hurt themselves. Um, but in another aspect, like I hired my own coach for that reason, because I, I'm like, yeah, you know, like I was, I was slacking guys. I was not doing accessories. Like I would go into the gym and I would just do my compounds. And I was like, damn, like, I don't, I don't feel like doing accessories today. Like I'm not going to do them or I just do like one or two. And then I would leave. Um, And I was neglecting the thing, like I'm benching three days a week now. And I was only benching one time before I got a coach. And obviously that's why my bench sucks, but I just, I wasn't good at it. And I'm like, ugh, I don't want, I'm like, ugh, you know? So, you know, they're going to help you where you're weaker and, um, you know, but they're, they're great for accountability. Um, even if you don't, you know, like don't necessarily get, a friend to go with you because if they lose motivation that, and then you don't want to go like without them, you know, now you're not going anymore. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're able to go, you're keeping yourself accountable or find someone who is truly going to keep you accountable, um, to continue to go. But you also don't want to wear yourself out by going every single fucking day, dude. Like don't do that to yourself. Um, 
you really want to Oh, because you really want to rest and recover. So like longer rest periods, um, you know, minimum of like two minutes, like rest anywhere from like two to four minutes on your compound movements and rest two minutes in between your accessories. Um, that's really going to help you like rest and recover because the resting, you should be resting longer than you're lifting. Like that's what, <laughs> that's what gets me in the gym. Like, um, but like my rest periods on my compounds right now are two minutes and between my, um, my accessories is one minute and I'm fucking supersetting my accessories and I'm still in the gym for two hours. Like I'm still in there for a very long time, but, um, you know, it's, everybody's going to be different. So like, you don't have to be in there for two fucking hours. Like you, the most you should be doing is like one compound movement. Um, if you're a beginner, one compound movement, um, if you're going three days a week, but even so, like as a newbie, you should be going once, twice a week and hitting a couple different ones. So like one week you could hit like your, um, if you're going, let's say you're going two days a week, right? And you're hitting squat one day with a couple leg accessories, like four accessories is good on any given day. But, um, if you're, if you're only going a couple days a week, I do recommend doing like full body stuff. Um, but if you're doing like squat and bench and deadlift and you really want to focus on those, like just kind of alternate them and then like keep your accessories full body. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> um, you know, you can do like dumbbell bench press and that's going to suffice for a bench press. Um, obviously it's not the same, but it would be okay to do. And then you could do like your squat and your deadlifts on separate days, go twice a week. And then, um, you know, just hit one accessory in each body group and for a couple sets and you're good to go. Like really that's what you should be doing when you're first starting out in the gym, one to two days a week, that's all you need to do. And you're going to start to see tremendous, you know, value from just those couple of days because one, you're not overworking yourself. So, um, you're not hitting those body parts like too, too much. Um, but you are still working them. And then two, you're giving yourself enough time to rest and recover in between. So like, that's a win, 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 you know, like, I don't know. It, it's harder to talk about when, you know, I've already been talking for so fucking long. <laughs> like I could do a whole separate podcast episode on that. And I might do that. Um, you know, talking about all of that. Cause I'm, I'm trying to keep these like recordings to like an hour. So that way when I edit it down, it's like maybe half hour, 45 minutes. But with, with that being said anyway, um, you know, like one to two times a week is going to be like the max you want to do coming in, um, coming into the gym, restarting in the gym, whatever it may be. Um, you know, just very, very minimal you want to do. Um, you don't want to like overdo it because then you're going to get sore you shouldn't be sore the next day. Like you might have a little soreness if it's the first time you've been in the gym, just because your body's not used to moving like that. But like, you shouldn't be sore two days later. You should not be sore. You shouldn't be sore the next day. Um, again, that's probably inevitable the first week, but like by the second week you're in the gym, you should not be sore because like that, if you're, if you're sore, that means you're going too hard. You need to lower the weight or lower the reps or both. Like you should not be sore. But like for me, if I, if I do a movement that I haven't done in a while, like, yeah, I get sore. Okay. I, I get a little sore and I'm only sore for, you know, that day. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's weird. You know, but it's, it's not something that I'm sore the next day because I'm, I'm not going to freaking put myself in the, like, I'm not going to do so much that like I'm sore. Like when I started with my coach, he had me doing 12 to 15 reps on all of my accessories. I don't know when I, I don't know that I've ever really done 12 to 15 reps on accessories. One, like you're, you're doing that. And it's like, I can't fucking count that high. I, I can't count that. high. I, I get bored. Okay. I get bored when I do that. And I picked hella lightweights like for, let's say bicep curls. I can do like 25, 30 pounds on bicep curls for like eight reps, but he wanted me to do 15 reps. I dropped that shit down to 10 pounds. I cut that like in a half to two, like to two thirds 
because I did not want to be sore. I wanted to do the movement because you should just be getting like a little pump with that. Like 12 to 15 is like more like your pump bodybuilder type rep range, right? And your powerlifting is like less than eight. So like less than six because nobody does seven reps. That's kind of weird, you know, like so six or less. And then you have your hypertrophy, which people call your muscle building phase, but you can build muscle in any phase. Like, I don't, I don't understand that, but it's hypertrophy, which is eight to 12 reps. And then anything over 12 reps is like your pump phase. And then anything under six is your strength, strength phase. So you're building strength, not necessarily muscle. You don't have to build muscle to build strength, but you also don't have to build strength to build muscle, (laughs) which is like a whole other, that's like a whole other thing. Um, but you got so much like going on there that you can do, but like do a moderate amount of weight, not too much that you're going to be like sore for two, three days, but a good amount, like a a good amount of weight right? where you feel comfortable and, um, not like the little, now some people might get five pound dumbbells, but like you could probably do more than five pound dumbbells, unless you're like a hundred pound girl who's never been in the gym before and never picked up weights. Like you should be able to do tens for majority of your exercises, unless it's like an overhead, like dumbbell extension. Like I can only do tens on those in each arm. But, um, you know, the first week I did it, like I did fives because I was like, I don't want to overexert myself. So, you know, you just kind of, kind of play it by ear, see how, see how it all goes. But like those little, little changes are what's going to make it so much more sustainable. And then, so you're, you're going to the gym one to two times a week. So you're not overexerting yourself. Um, and it doesn't have to be for an hour. It could be a simple little half hour workout, you know, it could be something that simple. Um, and that, and then just do some like body weight squats, like some push ups, girly push ups, whatever you want to do, like in between, um, on those off days, like just do something like a walk. Walk is great. I, I, I take like a couple walks now it's a little cold outside. So like, I don't walk as long, but normally I would take like a 10 minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner that gets your steps up. So it's going to help you lose some weight that way. Um, it's going to help build your metabolism because it's not, what it's, what it's doing is it's not giving the signal to cut muscle. It's, um, so that's the issue because building your metabolism is building muscle. The more muscle you have, the more body fat you're going to be able to burn because it's going to boost your metabolism. So you may think, oh, I have a broken metabolism. No, you just need to put on some muscle. Like, let's put on some muscle. Let's get, that's why you need to get strong because you're going to end up putting on more muscle from getting strong. So we want to build muscle. So we want to get strong so we can build muscle so we can lose body fat and build our metabolism. Like, it's that fucking simple, you guys. I know it doesn't sound simple, but like, it's that fucking simple. And, um, you know, just doing those little itty bitty swaps, that's, that's going to be a great start for you. One to two weeks in, or one to two weeks, fuck dude, one to two days in the gym a week with adding in some whole natural foods. So just, some, um, you know, uh, just adding in more protein, really what you want to hit, like the main goal with your diet should be one or 0.8 to one grams of protein for your body weight or for your lean body mass. So like, if you're like fairly overweight, your lean body mass or what your goal weight is, is what you should be hitting, um, in protein every day. Oh my God, bro. That's what you should be hitting in protein every day. And then from there, you know, you're gonna just focus on that. Just solely focus on that. And that's going to help. And then once we, oh my God, once we get to that point, then we can continue to like you know, you can continue to build your calories up from there. Um, not necessarily protein wise. I mean, if you want to add more protein, that's fine. But I know that once I, cause like my minimum that I hit in a day is 160. That's my minimum goal, but I can't go over 180 because then I can't digest it properly. So we got to kind of play around and see what works for you because I used to eat like 250 grams of protein a day in a deficit. I don't know how the fuck it, I ate a lot of fucking chicken. <laughs> I ate a lot of chicken. I ate like 16 ounces of chicken breast a day. Yeah. And then I would have some eggs for breakfast. Um, that was where I got most of my fats, but I personally do better on lower fats, higher carbs, higher, you know, moderate protein. 
Um, and everybody's different. Some people do better on higher fats, lower carbs. It just depends on the person. You got to figure out what works for you, but we definitely want to get you into a high protein diet because protein is more satiating and, um, which means you're going to, you know, not be as hungry as long. <laughs> I don't even know what I was going to say. Um, you know, but high protein diet, that that's really what you want to do. Um, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but that's because I keep forgetting. So, but yeah, you know, go to the gym one to two days a week. Take 30, 30 minutes out of your day to walk. 10 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's easy. You break it up into 10 minute intervals. It doesn't even have to be 10. It could be seven to 10. You know, five minute walk. Five minute walk is better than nothing, right? You're not doing anything right now. Do a five minute walk. And then work your way up to a 10 minute walk, you know? And then just try and hit that goal of either your body weight or you know, your goal body weight or your lean body weight in protein every day. And like, you're going to be set for some fucking success come this 2024. Okay. Like let's fucking get it. Um, anyway, I am so excited to have all of you guys here. Um, I don't know how well this is going to do. I'm going to put it on several different platforms, but I'm super fucking excited to start this podcast. Um, a little, little terrified too. Not going to lie. I'm a little terrified. Um, but I feel like this, this is a good first episode. I feel like you guys got to know me. I talked a little bit more about, um, some ways to help you coming into 2024, but we're going to have some more. We're doing meal prep and 101, um, you know, good best practices, stuff like that. Um, we'll, we'll kind of go over some other things. Obviously I'm going to be releasing these once a week because I do have a full-time job right now. <laughs> I have not fully transitioned over. I am working on building up my business so that way I can stay home, hopefully pump out more content for you guys. Um, that is the ultimate goal is to be working for myself, pumping out content, um, either in podcast form, YouTube videos, um, helping, you know, helping people. So, um, all of that. And if you do, um, you know, like this, you know, give it a thumbs up, like whatever platform you're on. I would really appreciate it. I love all of you guys. Um, yeah. Anyway, ciao. Adios. Avida say, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, that is the end of the first ever fit and fabulous episode. Uh, oh my God. I can't fucking talk. That is the end of the first fit and fabulous podcast. Again, it is so great to have you guys here and I look forward to seeing you guys in the future.